Okay, so today we're going to do the staudating reduction. So the staudating reduction lets you turn an azide into an amine. So it's a great way of making primary amines, which are otherwise kind of hard to access. So let me give you an example. Supposing we have this as our azide, so N double bond N double bond N, which means this one will have a positive charge, this one will have a negative charge. Supposing we want to turn that into the primary amine. Well, we do it with triphenylphosphine. So phosphorus with three phenyl groups attached and it has a lone pair. And like an awful lot of reactions which involve triphenylphosphine, phosphorus acts as a nucleophile. Sometimes it acts as a ligand, but when it's on its own, it will always act first as a nucleophile. It's a bad base, it's a good nucleophile. This is not in the right form for us to react with it, so this can resonate quite easily uh, between two double bonds and a triple bond and a single bond. So if you want to make that happen, it's going to resonate between this form and this form. So let's just redraw that out in that new form. So none of this has changed. That's still there. One of those bonds is still there. And two of those bonds are unchanged. We've added in a third one. So now this nitrogen is positive. And this nitrogen has the negative charge. And we still have our triphenylphosphine. So it's going to act as our nucleophile. This is going to act as our electrophile. Nucleophile, form a new phosphorus nitrogen bond, break the nitrogen nitrogen triple bond, or one of the triple bonds. What have we got then? Well, Everything that's here has to be there unless there's an arrow going from it or to it. So that's all there. That's still there. Nitrogen with a negative charge on it. Uh, single bond is still there. We've now got two of those remaining. We formed a new nitrogen phosphorus bond and it still has all three metal groups attached. So what do we do? We took that pair of electrons and made that neutral. That nitrogen has its lone pair back. And we took this pair of electrons and made a new nitrogen phosphorus bond. Phosphorus now has a positive charge. Well, what do we know about phosphorus? There it is in this molecule. Phosphorus is the row below nitrogen, so it's directly below nitrogen in the periodic table. So it's not constrained to only being able to form four bonds. And here's nitrogen with an extra pair of electrons or a negative charge on it. It's got two lone pairs. And here's phosphorus with a positive charge on it. So exactly what you might expect to happen, can happen, this can attack and form a new nitrogen phosphorus bond. But you're going to look at that and say, well, that's a four-membered ring. Let's see what it looks like once it's made. And you're going to notice that that's probably not a very stable intermediate. So these are all the bonds that were there until we drew in our arrow. Triphenylphosphine that had a positive charge but it's got an arrow going to it. This had a negative charge, so we made a new bond there. And this is a temporary intermediate. It's not going to last a whole long time because it's very easy to push the electrons around. And if we push those electrons around, what do we produce? And that step is most definitely going to be irreversible. It's favored by entropy and enthalpy. We've taken that nitrogen, phosphorus, that bond is still there. Our three phenyl groups are still there. Those two bonds are still there. We took this pair of electrons, we've now got a nitrogen-nitrogen triple bond, and we took that pair of electrons, and we've now got a nitrogen-phosphorus double bond. Well, I promised you that we'd end up with an amine and not with a nitrogen-phosphorus double bond. So there's one other thing that you need to put into this reaction, which I should have mentioned at the beginning, and that's water. This reaction is carried out in H2O, in water. And if you put this in with water, you'll notice that nitrogen, uh, something else, double bonds, are hydrolyzed in other reactions. So you'll have seen imines, and imines can turn into ketones or aldehydes if you just put in water. And the same kind of reaction mechanism is going to happen here. So if I add in my water now, that nitrogen gas is going to bubble out of the reaction. This can attack the phosphorus put the electrons onto the nitrogen, proton will transfer across, and exactly the same as when you're forming your uh, amine from your imine, or vice versa, 
proton across, lone pair puts in, pushes that out, proton across. And what you'll end up with after all of those mechanistic steps, which if you're interested in them, you can go look at the amine mechanism, or sorry, reductive amination mechanism, what you'll end up with is a primary amine, NH2, and triphenylphosphine, oxide. So triphenylphosphine oxide, the oxygen phosphorus bond, dual bond is very strong, also energetically favorable. So this whole reaction is driven by entropy and enthalpy, and it's a really nice way of making primary amines. And you'll have seen this kind of thing done in the Mitsunoba reaction. So if you take your alcohol, you can use hydrozoic acid as your nucleophile, as your pronucleophile, uh, to make an azide, and then you can turn that into an amine. And it's one of the easier ways of making an alcohol, a secondary alcohol, into a primary amine with retention of stereochemistry, or rather with inversion of stereochemistry. Okay, that's all for now. It's enough for me. Hope that helps. Azide to primary amine, stereoing a reduction, triphenylphosphine plus water will give you your primary amine back. All right, that's all for now. Bye.